Well, she's the woman who's turned the Church of Scientology on its head with claims of beatings and forced attention. Now, in an Australian TV exclusive, Debbie Cook has laid the blame squarely at the feet of the Church's most senior official. He ordered his secretary to slap me. And she um, slapped me so hard I fell over into the chairs. It's the showstopper of a court case that goes right to the top of the Church of Scientology. Mr. Scavenger ordered his communicator to break my finger if I didn't answer uh, his question. Her name is Debbie Cook, and the man she's referring to is Scientology's supreme leader, David Miscavige. There are quite a number of other former senior executives who've witnessed exactly the same thing. Were you used to in your life getting beaten up? Was that something you were used to? No, never. I would have signed anything in order to be able to go. Debbie spoke to ACA exclusively about being sued by the US branch of the church for sending an email which allegedly breached a gag order she signed in 2007. Can you tell us about why you sent the email originally and what you thought the repercussions actually might be? It was intended for my Scientologist friends and it was really um, a message to them within a few days uh, when it started to hit the press. That was something that I never intended to happen. And um, I was certain that the church wasn't happy about what was happening, and nor was I. What she wrote made for explosive reading, that the church had raised more than a billion dollars, that it was keeping most of that money in reserve, and that Scientology's fundraising drive was anything but its finest moment. All this from a woman who was once the public face of the church. Of all the adventures on the whole track, none compare to the ultimate prize of spiritual freedom. Debbie Cook says she spoke out through a sense of loyalty, to a religion she says has lost its way. If I can, I would actually like to um, read you a, a line out of the code of a Scientologist, one of the things that are, that are expected of a Scientologist. And it says, one, to keep Scientologists, the public, and the press accurately informed concerning Scientology, the world of mental health and society. Some argue that's a long way removed from the church we see today. A church whose leader David Miscavige might have friends in high places. But Debbie Cook's claims paint an unflattering picture of a figurehead whose role is under the microscope like never before. Um, he was very angry and he um, walked around a, a long, very long conference table to get to me. He basically grabbed my shoulders and, and shook me while he was yelling at me. Then there's the allegations of being locked up against her will. Describe it for us. Um, it had bars on the windows and the one entrance was guarded by security 24 hours a day. You ate there, you slept there, you were given a sleeping bag, you slept on the floor in a sleeping bag. There were um, ants, the place was infested by ants, so ants would crawl on you. This is the first time it's come out in a court of law, which makes it quite a little bit uh, harder for people like David Miscavige to ignore it anymore. Paul Schofield's an ex-Scientologist who met Debbie at US headquarters in the 1980s. He's not at all surprised she's still a follower of the religion. You've got someone who's only just discovered uh, the outside world. She's just finding out that there are people in the outside world who are more than willing to help her for no reason other than they want to help. It's very hard when you leave something like Scientology. You're really struggling for the first few years just to find out what the world's like. Now the church wants damages for Debbie's alleged breach of the gag order. She claims she had no choice but to sign. In a statement today, the Church of Scientology International flat out denied the allegations saying Debbie and her husband are simply bitter defrocked apostates attempting to spread falsehoods for personal gain and that they are expelled from the church, are prohibited from calling themselves Scientologists or ever again entering one of its churches. This has already been exhausting for you I'm sure but there's a long way ahead. Uh, are you ready for this court fight? 
It's something that I'm definitely not looking forward to. We're definitely going to have to do all we can to uh, walk the straight road on getting these matters settled. But um, it's definitely not something I'm looking forward to by any means. As for her allegations about a religion virtually drowning in its own wealth, you made certain allegations in this email that the church was more focused on fundraising than actually teaching its followers. Now, where has all the money gone? I have a lot of information about that. It's just not something that um, would be wise for me to discuss uh, at the moment. And a full copy of the Church of Scientology's response can be found on our website.